What up guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, in case you're new here, may not know, but most of my videos are recorded in Portuguese. But for this one specifically, I decided to record in English. So we can help more engineers around the world uh, integrating their applications with SendGrid, right? Uh, so for this demo, we're naturally gonna be using uh, SendGrid and we're also gonna be using GoDaddy, which is where I purchased one of my domains. And we're gonna be using Visual Studio 2019. So for the first uh, step, we're going to need to set up our uh, SendGrid account, right? So just go ahead on Google, search for SendGrid, create your account. And then once you're logged in for the first time, you're going to be seeing something similar to this, right? Um, here you can see a visual indicator saying that I uh, already completed all the steps, but you want to go ahead and complete, make sure you completed all the steps here, right? So you want to make sure you confirm uh, your email address. You want to set up a two-factor authentication and you want to add a payment method. Uh, for this step here, guys, don't worry. You won't get charged anything uh, until you purchase one of the SendGrid paid plans, right? So the free version, uh, uh, you are allowed to send up to a hundred emails a day. So for this demo, like this is more than enough, right? So for this step here, guys, authenticate your sending domain. You can like, you know, either click on the links uh, provided here on the screen, or you can always just go to settings and then go to sender authentication. And once you're here, if you have any, uh, senders are already authenticated here you would be you see them listed here in this case we have none so i'm just going to go ahead and click get uh, get started and then here i'm going to select my uh dns host in this case godaddy right here i'm going to hit next and then here i'm going to type my domain in this case technogen.com i'm going to hit next and then here guys they're going to provide me like a few fields that i need to properly set up on my uh dns account so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this guy here I'm gonna go here, add a C name, add this as my host, and then it points to, I'm gonna copy this guy here. All right, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna add a new one. It's also C name. Host is gonna be this one back here. Now point save it, right? So once I properly set this up, I can go, go back here. I'm gonna click on, I've added this records and I'm gonna verify. So as you can see here, I got some warnings, right? Complaining that uh, the fields are not matching properly. So what you can do guys, whenever you get like error messages like this, you can always visit their documentation, you know, like here you're gonna be able to see the, the errors that you're most likely gonna hit when you properly, uh, when you're trying to set up your uh, DNS. And uh, I already like figured out what I did wrong, right? So uh, here, I don't need to add my domain. I only need to add this first part. This is what I did wrong, right? So, and this this is also valid for the, the other fields too. So I need to go and like, and remove my, my domain for those values. So I'm just gonna go ahead here, edit this guys, and then remove this. I'm gonna hit save. Go to my second one, remove my domain, hit save. And then on the third one, I'm gonna go ahead, remove my domain, hit save. So now I can go back here and then just hit uh, verify once again. Okay, don't know why it's complaining still. Let's just hit once more. Nope. Well, nope. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it might take a while to uh, properly validate your fields, you know, but uh, once that's completed, you're going to, you know, see uh, this nice message here and then just click on this button. And now you're going to be able to see your domain listed here, right? You can always just click here if you want to delete. You can go ahead and delete. Um, but yeah, let's just go back here. And yeah, you're done. You've properly set up uh, your domain. So this is the first part. And now the second part is going to be creating the API that's actually going to be, uh, you know, sending emails uh, on your application. All right. So now that we're done with this part, we can go ahead and go back to our setup guide. And then here you're going to see this section here. And now we're going to start creating a web API. So we're going to go ahead and select this option here. Hit start. And then here uh, we see two options, right? You can either set up our STP uh, relay or we can go ahead and choose the web API option. We're going to go with the web API option. And then now uh, we see all these options for different uh, programming languages. And here you can choose uh, the one you're going to be using. Uh, for this demo, we're going to be using C Sharp. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose this one here. 
So here, guys, they're going to uh, walk over uh, the steps you need to take in order to properly set up your API. Um, so in this step here, you're going to give it a name to uh, our API key, right? You need to create an API key in order to complete this. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this demo uh, API key. Let's create a key, right? So just make note of this, guys, so you don't lose it. Just copy this to Notepad and this guy here, so we won't lose it. And now we can go ahead and follow the the other steps, right? So you're gonna have to create um, a project here, right, on Visual Studio. So let's just go ahead and open Visual Studio 2019. So now they have our project created. Uh, let's go back and follow the steps. So here on this third step, uh, it tells me to create an environment variable, right? I'm not going to be doing this, guys. Uh, for this demo purpose, I'm just going to be hard coding the, uh, the key here. Uh, but I do not re recommend you to do that. That's a terrible practice. Um, but I'll be skipping uh, this step for now. And then we're going to go to the install package here, right? So there are many different ways that you can install NuGet packages. I'm just going to go, uh, you can either follow uh, the command line here, or you can just go uh, right click on your project, um, find your package here, in this case, send grid. Whoops. Send grid. We're going to find this guy here, uh, install it. Make sure we have all the dependencies, accept. So now we can see the SendGrid package uh, properly installed to this project, right? So let's just go back to our step here. Uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and copy uh, the code, right? So I wanna make sure I copy this uh, method here, right? I wanna make sure I'm including uh, SendGrid here, SendGrid packages, um, great. So now just want to make sure I want to be yeah calling my method right here. All right. Let me just add this guy here. Okay. So let's just build this project here. Uh, see if it's working. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Um, so here we can see there we're probably going to be sending an email email from test at example.com to test at example.com. Right. Let me just update this guy, this guy here to technogen at gmail.com and use the same one here. Send an email to myself, um, save this. And now uh, let's go back here to our, doc to our steps. And then here, I'm just gonna go ahead and check. I've integrated the code above and then uh, hit next, verify integration, right? So let's ask for integration. Uh, send an email to, uh, from your application using uh, the code you just integrated. If that runs without error, click verif verify integration. Awesome. So let's just go ahead now and run uh, this project here and see what happens. So here I'm going to be sending an email from uh, my email to my email. <laughs> so let's see if that works. So yeah, the subject of the email should be sending uh, with SendGrid. It's fun. So let's make sure we get a email with that subject. Let's run here. Oh, wow, it's failing. Whoops, yeah, of course. Uh, it's failing. <laughs> Let me just uh, make sure, guys. And uh, so I'm going to replace this with the real key. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy from our one, from our notepad where we added a key. This is terrible practice, guys. Don't ever do this. I'm just doing for for the demo, right? We don't. You don't ever want to expose your your keys like that in your code. So okay, we should be good now. Let's just uh, run this. All right, it it executed just fine. So let me go back now to my to my Gmail account and see if you got any emails. Yeah. So no, I did not get any emails, but why is this happening? Uh, let me go back and look at my code, right? So here guys, uh, we set up the domain as uh, technogen.com, right? So I cannot be sending emails from like Gmail, right? Like we don't have information uh, from it, but we do have information from the domain uh, technogen.com. So if I come here and then let's say, uh, hello, right, at technogen.com, I should be able to now send an email from an email from my domain 
to any other email, right? So let's skip the email from uh, as this one here and then use my Gmail account as the destination email, right? So let's save this and run this once more and see if this time we're gonna be getting an email, right? All right, my application completed. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Let me go back to my email account, Gmail account, refresh this. So if you're getting any emails, it might take a while to for this email to show up. And there you go. We got our, our email. So let's just open it. As you can see, this is the subject, guys, uh, as expected. And then here you can see the email that was sent. It was sent from uh, technogen.com. And then the email that we set up was hello, right? Then here you can see our message. So yeah, uh, it's working fine uh this is pretty much how you can uh integrate uh send user uh sorry send grid with your application and uh, yeah should work just fine all right yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the demo uh please if you did like the video uh hit the subscribe button uh make sure you like the video share with friends and yeah thanks very much for watching